Hey guys, welcome back to the Bayside Fabrication YouTube channel. As you can tell by the title of this video, I am doing absolutely nothing related to cars today. That's right. Um, so I bought a brand new West Marine 310 rib, which is a 10 and a half foot uh, rigid hard bottom inflatable dinghy. Um, I've never owned anything in my life before that's brand new other than toilet paper. So I wanted to take a stab at just giving this a uh, kind of a quick review, what it comes with, what it looks like, and of course how it performs. Mainly, I wanna see how fast this thing goes. And I'll show you the power that we're gonna be powering with in two seconds. But um, let's just go through the initial, uh, I opened it up real quick just to make sure there was a boat inside of here at the store, but I haven't really done anything other than that. Uh, initially, it comes with this. This is all the paperwork. First thing it comes with is a owner's manual, which we don't really need. If you can't figure out how to blow up a inflatable boat, and look at the parts and understand what it comes with, then it's not for you. This is our registration or a uh, warranty uh, registration card. So we'll fill this out, get this in for any warranty work that um, is available for this, potentially in the future. And manufacturer statement of origin, AKA the title for this vehicle. So we'll get this all filled out. Uh, in the state of Florida, anything with a motor has to be titled and registered. So. Uh, we're probably going to bend the law a little bit because I have to make an appointment to go to the tax collector's office to register this and that usually takes about a week or so to get in. Let's get to the fun stuff. Let's check this thing out, see what it looks like. And I already have modifications for this boat right off the bat. So we're going to be drilling holes in the transom and doing all sorts of stuff before it even sees the water. So. This boat cost me, it was on sale, it was normally like 20, I think it was right around $2,000. It was on sale for like a Black Friday type deal for 1,400 out the door after tax and everything. It was $1,572 is what I paid out the door for this. So um, that's what we're dealing with here. So let's just check out what we got going on here. Okay, so obviously the first step is be careful when you're cutting it open. You don't wanna slice one of your tubes with a razor blade uh, on a brand new boat. So as of right now, it looks exactly how I expected. It's a rigid, hard bottom inflatable boat. Now this is the PVC tube version. Now there are pros and cons of the PVC. Uh, mainly cost is a huge one. It's about half the price of a Hypalon version. Now, the cons is they tend to degrade a little quicker with UV light. So that sucks for someone that lives in Florida. However, this boat is going to be undercover 99.9% .9 of the time. The only time it's gonna be exposed to UV light is when it's on the water and being used. So that doesn't really concern me. I think the Hypalon version of this is like $3,500 or something. And it's legit the same hull with just Hypalon tubes, not PVC. So that's why I went with this option. Um, I think first step now is going to be to inflate it. Uh, I'll see what comes in the uh, kit here and we'll see the size of this thing and how it all looks. But the um, reason I went with a hard bottom boat is because they are, uh, they perform much better uh, when getting up on plane. You don't have a soft floor you're trying to walk on. I've owned a bunch of small boats before, uh, dinghies, and, uh, matter of fact, and the soft bottoms, they just suck. Even with the inflatable soft bottoms, they're just, they're no good. You get a couple people in them. They don't like the plane out. They just don't handle that well. So I decided to go with a hard bottom because I think this thing's gonna perform pretty well. So I actually haven't seen any reviews with a 15 horsepower motor on this, which is what this boat is rated for. All of them I've seen is nine nines, which is a great motor obviously, but I wound up picking up a, forgive my filthy garage here, a 2020 15 horsepower uh, Suzuki four stroke for um, uh, 1600 bucks. So I got a super good deal on it. It's got low hours, everything looks great. I just did an oil change on it, runs beautifully. I've never had it on any boat, so I haven't had it in the water, but the guy I bought it from, he had a little John boat. He you know went up on plane, tested it out and everything looked good. So. Anyways, let's get this inflated right now and see what uh, see what it looks like. All right, let's see what comes in this kit here. I 
assume it's going to be the pump, oars, cross member, things like that. So here's the cross member. Honestly, I never really have ever used one on a boat of this size. They almost tend to be in the way. But maybe the kiddo will like it uh, when going out. Here's the pump, which I'm pretty much not going to use because it's a total waste of time to just sit there and pump it with your foot. I have an air compressor, so we'll uh, use the air compressor. All right, so we got the cores. What do we got here? A little patch kit, it looks like, and a little wrench for the valves. So here it is inflated looks like a inflatable hard bottom boat now the one thing i did want to double check was the outside to outside measurements because i don't want to mess around with inflating or deflating this thing when it's um when we're at the boat ramp or wherever we're launching it i want to inflate it at the house or just leave it inflated all the time and go so i have uh 61 inches from the very outside to the very outside on the widest part of this boat my Toyota Tundra is 62 and a half. So I have uh, enough room to fit this in the bed of my truck and that's perfect. Now the second thing is, well, what do I do once I get there? I mean, with a hundred pound, 120 pound motor and then a hundred and whatever this is, you know, pound boat, I can't just pick this thing up. So I bought some wheels for it. Now, this is the first thing I wanted to do before I went in the water because there's no way I'm buying a trailer for this and, you know, dealing with a trailer situation. I already have very little room in my yard as it is. So I want to just be able to pick this thing up by the bow and just wheel it around wherever I want. So um, for 60 bucks, I got a transom uh, wheel kit. So this is going to bolt to the transom and these wheels will flip up and we'll just show you how we're doing this now. Right, guys check it out here's our wheels got some good news and some bad news good news is they're gonna work awesome bad news is they won't be able to flip up and be up and be functional no matter what it's gonna hit this gusset here and it's just not gonna work so it's not a huge deal we just obviously just pop them off when we don't need them and uh like I said, if there's ever a situation where they have to go with us, we'll just pop them off, throw them in the boat, you know? But that's fine. But with this setup here, this will definitely get us wheeling this thing around. All the weight will be obviously on this end, so it should be fairly light uh, doing that. <music> There we go guys so we're just going to seal up our brackets with some 5200 let it sit overnight and it will be ready to uh, party in the morning so that's as easy as that gets now like i was saying before this setup will not work with these wheels tilted up no matter what so none of that even matters but this was the best position for that i wanted to get it as wide as possible so as you can see on the inside here we got these knees on the transom so you can only go so wide um, and be able to still through bolt it uh, and have the wash and everything. So that's it. 
it for tonight. We'll let this uh, 3M5200 cure and we will play with uh, the boat tomorrow morning. Okay, we are on our way to uh, a little beach area that should have nice, easy launching here. Um, one thing I did want to uh, let you guys know is that I did take it out the other day with my family. Uh, I wasn't gonna record it or do really any kind of testing with uh, a two-year-old in the boat. Um, she's enough to handle as it is. So, um, but I did learn a couple things and I wanted to share with you and you'll see what we're doing. Uh, the prop that was on it was a little bent. It had a chip out of it and um, I found out once we got on plane, it actually, you know, I gave it, you know, full throttle and we actually hit the rev limiter. So I said to myself, okay, well, if it's hit the rev limiter with all of us on here, then it's either cavitating um, because the prop isn't, you know, perfect or the pitch isn't quite, uh, isn't quite right for that light of a boat. Uh, it did come on a, I don't know, 12, 12 foot John boat it came off of. So I don't think he had that problem of uh, getting the revs up that high. However, uh, that was a concern. So what I went ahead and did is I bought a uh, higher pitched prop and obviously it's brand new. So it was like 50, 60 bucks or something like that. And I'm going from a nine and a quarter by nine pitch to a nine and a quarter by 12 pitch. So that should definitely help us out uh, a little bit there on the top end. Uh, but we'll see. There's only one way to find out. So when we uh, launch this thing, I'm going to start off with the prop that was on it, which is the um, which is the nine pitch, and then we'll swap it out and we'll do the 12 pitch and just see a back to back. But like I said, the nine pitch is a little beat up. I'll show it to you. It's got a little chip hanging out of it and stuff like that. So it's uh, it's probably compromised as is. So um, either way, it needed a new prop. So I figured just give it as much prop as you can buy, which is a 12 pitch and see what happens because a 15 horse on that boat is quite a lot of motor for it. So I think it can handle the, uh, handle the extra, uh, extra prop pitch there. All right guys, we're out in the water. Just putting around a little bit, get some heat in the motor. So this is the nine and a quarter by nine pitch prop. Of course, we have our life jacket on. Throw my lanyard on in case things get squirrely. Let's see how she does. Well, I gotta go way forward with this.
So guys, first impressions is if you're sitting on that side tube and it's only you, it gets squirrely like real quick. And now we're gonna put on our 12 pitch prop. As you saw, we were hitting the rev limiter at about 22 miles an hour. Um, and the takeaway is, I just feel in general, this boat to be stable just needs more weight in it. Um, it's just with, uh, with it being that lopsided, it's freaking, it's, uh, it's a little squirrely, um, but sitting in the middle, totally fine. So we'll just uh, try it again with this new prop and see how it goes. All right, so here we are, old prop versus new prop. You see the old one had a little chunk out of it. I actually um, took a pair of pliers to it too because one of the blades had a visible bend in it when I first got it, so I tried to kind of eyeball it. But the motor does vibrate just a little bit. I'm hoping maybe the prop was just bent or something and running a little vibration through the drive line. But we'll see if this uh, new prop solves a lot of problems for us. All right, here we go with a new prop. I'm smart enough not to uh, sit on the tube this time. I almost need a brace on this thing. All right, we're gonna switch up our position here a little bit. I think I'll have a better angle on it so I can hold it a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, just hold it at a better angle. I don't know what I saw there. I think we're at like 26 mile an hour. So it looks like 27 is our number with this prop. I'm going to try raising the motor um, motor position, not the height, but the actual uh, trim on it, just up one hole and see if that makes any difference for us.
So we're just putting back here, guys, and I just want to give you my kind of my final thoughts on this little rib here. Um, it's a great boat, handles really well, and does everything you need, you know, for a rib uh, up until about 22 miles an hour. Anything after that, it gets a little hairy. So um, my opinion was I have this little uh, tiller uh, brake here. So essentially you can add some resistance to this so it's not, you know, just doesn't flop around. And really above, you know, above 20, it, uh, it's really hard to control. Um, and the motor actually, you know, you hit a little wake or some side chop and the motor wants to, you know, pull and then you almost start like a death wobble thing. Um, so it gets a little sketchy at that point. I wouldn't recommend, you know, cruising around this thing at 30 uh, unless you kind of know what you're doing. Um, and even then, you know, it's a little bit unpredictable. So, uh, but as far as everything else is concerned, I mean, it's a good little boat. It does everything you need to do. Um, it fits in the back of my pickup truck with those wheels. Uh, so that setup is great. You don't have to trailer it or anything. Uh, the motor is a little heavy, I would say. I mean, it's like 120 pounds. So it's not the easiest to, you know, lug around and, and, and whatnot. And you do kind of need to remove it to get it into the truck. Getting it out of the truck, you don't but getting it into the truck uh, with the with it on the transom, it's just a little too heavy uh, for me. I'm sure if you're jacked or something, it's not a problem, but for a skinny dude like me, uh, it's just easier to take the motor off. But yeah, man, this thing is, it's definitely fun. And you know, the whole purpose of me buying it was I actually sold my 21 foot Paramount center console and I am uh, looking into like an express cruiser more or less camping on the water type adventure for me and the family and this is just going to be our little tender so you know we can anchor out like you know any of these sailboats and stuff are in the deeper water and then you load the family on this and you go to sandbars and beaches and explore and it's just a nice fun little boat to put around in um i was hoping it would have handled a little better at speed but man this the hull is definitely designed to go you know 15 miles an hour on plane um, and yeah I guess that's about uh, that's about it for three thousand dollars all in it's definitely a fun little toy and you know what it gets me and the family out on the water and for that kind of price getting you out here and just you know enjoying the nice air and breeze it's worth it in the end so just to clarify i have no affiliation with west marine or suzuki or anything like that so this is all just stuff that i went out and just bought and uh yeah i just want to uh want to share this little this little review with you guys and if you're in the market for one of these i hope it could have been helpful to you so we'll see you on the next one i appreciate y'all watching